Good day, fellow investors. Many of you expected it, so here we go. Solar sector analysis 2024, stock by stock, solar ETF. I'll give you a risk and reward of the sector of the key stocks. We'll go, even you'll understand what's the risk and reward of the solar ETF. I think I will save you days of work. There'll be timestamps below, so you see which is what, and if you're interested in a specific stocks, and let's immediately start. For those of that don't know me, I'm a researcher, I have my own research platform, and I do research, and actually I launched my research platform in 2018 exactly on the solar sector. We did well, we invested in a stock that made 4x at max, I think, and now looking at the solar sector, I did the first analysis here in June after some Chinese subsidies cut. Then we had the solar boom and now we are having the solar bust and we are low enough, I think, given the positive trend in the solar environment to dig deeper into solar again. I'll start immediately with first solar which I think is 10% of the solar ETF, a big player there. And I think will be great also to show the risk and reward of the sector as a whole, the key issues that you must know if you're interested in investing in solar. So 20 billion market cap, it crashed after this clear exuberant boom, but we are still at good levels there for the stock. Thus, let's see what is the right value. The first thing for First Solar and the first thing on their website and everywhere is that they are an American solar panel producer. American means away from import tariffs and then try to do it domestically. However, if you look at the prices for those solar panels in China, those have crashed, crashed to new record lows now. And that's why I'm telling you that maybe the best investment in solar might be to invest in solar panels on your house at these prices. First solar is selling at 0.3 or 40 cents per watt the prices in China are closer to 10 cents, but that is what you get when you put tariffs and everything. However, the solar trend is still expected to grow significantly. You have projections like this where everything grows crazily, and these projections are especially those that have been around 2021, expecting like solar will grow 20% per year going forward. However, Wood Mackenzie still added some growth projections because they took a low base, but they are much more conservative and the total gigawatts installed are expected to be pretty much flat going forward in this expectation. And this is now a huge difference because solar producers are investing for this while real demand might be like this. If that happens, that would be a big, big hit to many investors and investments. Therefore, there is still a risk if you just invest into a solar ETF or something. As I told you, cheap prices from China, despite tariffs, solar panel imports are surging, which then also makes it difficult for solar. There have been some articles how these American players like First Solar are constantly investing into growth, more capacity, more production, doubling production over a few years, but solar factories are in for a rude awakening discussing how prices globally have gone lower and lower and despite the tariffs it might be even cheaper to buy abroad. Nevertheless, for solar goes for a full capacity projection on selling prices. They have contracted sales still 2027. They have almost three times the average selling price than China. Their cost per watt is double the selling price in China. 
And therefore, as long as tariffs and subsidies resist, then First Solar will likely make money. But the thing is that we do not know what is beyond 2027. So tax credits are key. But when it comes to solar panel prices, now the price in China is 0 0.12 cents per watt. Look at this development. Of course, big development in the 2010s. Here, solar started really booming. Then we were at 0 0.43, 0 0.40, and now we are at 0 0.12. You, as a solar company, are constantly investing billions and billions into chasing new technologies, lowering those selling prices. This is a terrible business. Solar is a terrible business because you constantly have lower prices. You constantly need to invest in technologies that are top edge. People are constantly investing because all of the money that has flown into and is still flowing into green energy and therefore it's a very very tough business to make money in especially cash flows that you can take out and invest something else you don't see Buffett investing in solar that is something we must know a priori and then we can go forward and another great way to get to know a sector is to read the conference calls or listen to those and if we look at first solar's earnings, we see that their selling prices are pretty high and they are just planning to continue to grow. They have been adding nameplate capacity, will be adding to 2026, and I think they have production sold till 2027. Cash flows were there in 2023, nothing wrong, but still there are capital expenditures that are very high. And the key of the talk is more political, where the CEO and the strategy actually depends on the US government putting tariffs, more tariffs on all imports from not just China, but all over the world without those this company would not survive. So as long as the US taxpayer likes to pay three times the price, then First Solar will do well. So as a shareholder, please send a thank you note to all US taxpayers. And you can see how they continue talking about these tariffs, which is then the key risk also for First Solar, because it's not just China, Cambodia, Malaysia, Thailand, Vietnam. They want tariffs on everybody to protect their booked capacity and then also further. Given that they have contracts, there are some delay with some contracts with some purchases, but still they expect to do well. They expect to make money. They still expect to spend that money all on new capacity, but the guidance is there and their guidance is for very, very high earnings per share of 13 to $14 in 2024. If you look at the price, the growth ahead, then it looks like a very cheap stock. However, if we look at then further estimates as that capacity grows on current prices, they could make 30 bucks per share, which is then a P ratio of five. If you look at the projections and huge growth in earnings going forward. Now, if they make 30 bucks and keep growing, keep producing, keep having profitable production, all great. But we cannot see beyond 2027. And the thing is that their cost of production is pretty high. Will they be able to lower it? If some other people come into the government, they might cut these tax benefits and then it would look very, very ugly for First Solar. So this is kind of a bet. And you can see here, without the tax credits, how the margins simply evaporate. So it is a US taxpayer 
business. When it comes to our categorization, it is a relative buy. Yes, 30 EPS, the P ratio is five in a few years, and that makes it a relative buy. Absolute, I have no idea where the technology will be after 27, whether the tax credits will be there. So it is all hanging in the air, and therefore the stock is priced for a potential P ratio of five in the coming years based on the already contracted sales. Margin of safety, absolutely no, because as long as you have a big risk hanging over your head, that's not a value investment. So as a value investing channel, I will not consider this. If you want to gamble a little bit and things end up well, you can have an easy free X on this stock because the 30 earnings per share times 15, that's a stock price of 400, 450. And then you see, if it doesn't happen, it is 75% down. So you have to see how this solar bet fits you and maybe learn more about the bet scenario to see whether you can have an advantage over the market. Then we have Emphase Energy Inverters. It boomed and then it crashed again with the solar cycle, 16 billion market capitalization. And then you think whenever something is installed, they need these things in those solar system, whether it is house, whether it's this. Now they are also growing with batteries. They want to increase their share of wallet per home on renewables and Everything looked great. They were growing fast. They were issuing equity to grow capacity and everything. However, sales dropped more than 50% in 2023. And we can expect revenues to be half of what they were in 2023 with earnings per share below one. Comparing below one with the stock price, that's a P ratio of 100, which means that I have to wait on a reversal of the trend. And this was funny where I was looking at the conference call. So just a $16 billion company, but look at the interest from Wall Street. Everyone is there, everyone is covering because solar was and still is a little bit of a hot sector, despite the exuberance deflating a little bit. Discussing the conference call, the first thing that the CEO discussed is how their average call wait time was one minute in Q4. Your sales dropped 30%. Of course, there is no wait time in your call center, sorry. But focus on the 50% drop, not the drop in call waiting time because there you have no more customers calling. But anyway, the drop is projected to continue 2024, but then analysts are again projecting 43 and 18% growth going forward. And if the solar trend reversed, this might happen. However, we'll see later as we dig into other stocks that there is competition. Capacity is huge. There are no really competitive advantages. So it is just a commodity thing. They say that the bottom will end in Q2 of 2024 because customers are destocking their inventories and then they will come back to a normal run rate of I think 600 million per quarter. But still, even at those levels, we are talking eight, 10 times revenues, which still shows that the sector is crazy and perhaps still a lot of exuberance and the money that simply has to flow because this is now cool to invest money in such things. So maybe, okay, 300 million per quarter at the 15 billion market capitalization, too crazy. Next tracker, an IPO doing well, a very good, interesting spin from Flex and the market capitalization in 10 billion. They track the sun with their solar panels and make them rotate. The expectation is that the business will just continue to grow and it might happen, it might not happen. Nothing wrong with this business. It's just a bit expensive as it is expected to be when it is the third 
in the solar ETF. So very smart from flex to spin that off and get a good ride on the solar exuberance trend. The consensus is for growth, but that's already priced in and uh, EPS of three on the 50, that is already, even when they reach it in 2025, it's already very, very high. And then we don't know what will be the growth rate there. If Wood Mackenzie is right, there will not be growth. If not, there will be. But that's again risky for those valuations. Solar Edge Technologies, the darling of the market in 2019 when I was analyzing it, everyone said, Sven, you don't know anything. You missed this. And I said, yes, I don't know much about inverters. However, now I'm somehow happy that I missed it as the stock is where it was when I analyzed it in 2019. The company is an example of what happens when sales dry up, huge profitability and growth turns into losses. So last quarter was terrible. I think revenues were down 80% and they are now losing money. And yes, everything looks great, but when you see the projections there on growth for solar and everything, and you see the actual revenue destruction revenue destruction quarter from the previous year that is insane gross margin going to zero so they are producing and selling at cost and then you ask yourself okay what's going on and the, they say that they are again leaving customers to this stock and everything will turn again well in the next year However, that might turn well, that might not turn well. And if they are losing money, still investing, then you know things are risky. I don't know who will win that inverter game. Will the market grow or not? But at these valuations, in this business especially, shows how it is risky. There is no competitive advantage. If you don't buy from this guy, you buy from that guy. And as soon as there is a slowdown, higher interest rates, slowdown in new contracts, whatever, this gets extremely ugly. Changing subject a little bit, Hannon Armstrong. So this is, I think, a utility boomed and then went boomed like everyone else and then coming back. But we are here with a dividend yield of 6.23%. They are again, long-term growth investing, actually, huge expected growth the earnings per share that can be distributed are projected to double in the next few years at a dividend yield of six percent if this doubles then the stock will double too so there you have a double however they are growing they are investing but they have been investing at seven percent and they are now investing in 9%, which means that the value of all these projects that they invested is already much, much lower because the yields went up as interest rates went up. That's logically. They are also growing by huge share dilution. So the management might be more focused on doing more deals to get more compensated rather than rear shareholder value. And it is a pure spread game. This is their debt costs and this is their portfolio yield. As I said, around 7%. Now it's going a little bit higher because interest rates are higher. However, if interest rates stay higher, this quickly becomes a risky business, doesn't make any money on that spread, and therefore it is a gamble. And if Jamie Dimon, as we discussed on Friday, is right, then all these utility spread businesses are toasted. Here is their debt, 1 billion interest rate, 3.38 maturity year 2026. If interest rates are at 5%, they will need to borrow at 8%. They invested at 7%. That's called bankruptcy. Sorry, but it is what it is. So yes, it looks good on a relative perspective, but it is very risky from an absolute perspective. That is the inherent risk of this. Then we have Xinyi Solar Holdings and Hong Kong listed did very badly, then jumped 100% over the last few weeks as earnings came out. They are producing the glass that goes onto the panels. Somehow that glass 
is still in demand, still everyone is investing, prices are still relatively okay, and they are trading at a P ratio of 13 now. In Hong Kong, I don't understand enough about glass to know how it will develop over time, so I have not much to comment, and the investor page is weak, and I don't read Chinese, so uh, not for me to discuss more. Again, another volatile stock uh, just producing silicon, thus depends on the demand for solar panels, boomed, bust, profits not looking good for silicon as silicon prices declined, which is then a positive for producers as they can pay less, but then again, hard to know where will this go. And yes, if demand again gets above supply, prices will go up, you can make some money, but it's not a long-term sustainable situation. I don't know where it will look. Sunrun, rooftop solar businesses, most rooftop solar businesses went bankrupt, and here it is just an accounting thing. If they use a 6% discount rate for the value of their long-term customers, yes, there is some value. If I use a 9% higher interest rates, then the value is a negative. This is the risk and reward. Airi Technologies, I think, again, a tracker, but the stock boomed in the exuberance and then went just nowhere. And there are many of these businesses searching for business around and when I look at what makes the ETF, anyone that puts something, makes a business, uh, puts two wires, is included into the ETF, and it simply doesn't look good. We have 2 billion of market cap, expected free cash flow of 100 billion, but then that can be, that cannot be, you never no, hard to know, hard to see, especially beyond a few years, depending on the competitive environment. Of course, they made an acquisition or merger in 2022, which means likely when it was expected. The logic should be simple. You make a solar panel, you need those trackers, the more solar panels are installed. But it seems that technology is not that complicated that others cannot chase it, which means that the durable competitive advantages are simply not there. Shoals Technologies, again, something inventing simple ecosystem. They have good orders, but the backlog has stalled. If you look at this from a stalled perspective, then it is simply too expensive and too risky, even on the guidance. Now, a net net market cap 2 billion cash 3 billion so you think Sven this must be a value investment and uh, well it likely is this is a value investment so Daco New Energy owns 72% of the Chinese subsidiary Xinjiang Daco that is listed in China market cap adjust the market cap to dollars and of the 3 billion in cash that they have 2.18 billion should belong to the US listing. And if we look at the US listing, you're buying 2 billion and you're getting 2. Point, uh, what did I say? 18 billion, 2.2 billion in cash. So you're buying $1 for 90 cents plus everything else, plus all the future cash flows. However, they're Cost is pretty stable, depends on uh, energy prices, but their selling prices are now close to cost. They have invested a lot into growing that production and they will invest even more. And if there is a boom like this, they will again make a lot of money as they did in 2022, $2.5 billion. And they did also pretty well in the years prior and after that. However, there is cash, 2.2 billion then for the shareholder in the US. However, the thing is that I don't know whether that cash is going to ever get to your hands as a shareholder. If we look at what the management is saying, tremendous challenges, so let's better keep the cash with us, don't do anything stupid. They are still going to spend 1.1 billion on their growth and development capex, which means that 
already we have to take 30% out of that cash and more capacity means even lower prices. So you don't know when will that go to such a situation that it gets into your pocket. And uh, the Chinese subsidiary has announced a dividend and now we are waiting for mid-April announcement, maybe as this video is out, we'll already be there, on what will they do. But they have announced a dividend and I think that about 90 million will get to US listed entity. So even if they do a buyback, that is 5%. That is not the 2 billion that they could give you, but will not. So how will the cash come out? Will it, when and how much? That's the risk and reward. The only way to know that is to call the CEO, to trust the CEO, and then see. I wish that you are buying a dollar for 90 cents and this is a net net and you get everything else for free and over the next 20 years everything grows and you make a lot of money, a lot of dividends. But unfortunately, it's not like that. They will do some buybacks, maybe they'll do some buybacks and they themselves will sell the shares. So uh, it is too much of an unknown to just sit there and hold. It's not Berkshire Hathaway, unfortunately. Now, and a little bit too early with the IPO, they, but still their stock did an exuberant thing everything will grow, everything is superior, strong increase and projected increase in portfolio, but they are still growing by booming liabilities and issuing shares as a normal utility. Next, we have Canadian Solar. We did a video already on it, debunking it, and uh, you can check that video if you want debunking Canadian Solar that is or not a uh, strong by Clearware Energy, so another utility, another spread, corporate debt refinancing, and then we have to see when and how will that be refinanced. Everything looks great, the yield is great, everything looks great, but this is then again utility, US, everybody is now investing in the US, but Warren Buffett warned in his letter to shareholders about the change in the utility environment in the US, which is then another risk and a risk that long-term investors should think about before betting on reversals here. Just looked a little bit at the notes as they start reverting these billions and refinancing, it can get interesting. I'll put a link in the description below to others that I touched a little bit so that the video doesn't get too long and you can click that and on my research platform it will be on free preview and you will see how some of these fit or not. Now I'm buying I think over the summer I'll check whether I can buy at 12 cents per watt and I'll put it on my roof. That is the smartest investment I have found in the solar sector. It doesn't involve ETFs, it doesn't involve anything. Of course, check how the local legislation works with you, if there are some tax benefits to get, and get them contracted, and then you know whether you can get a 10, 15, 20% return on the installment for the next 20 years, which is then something interesting. Prices have crashed, Keep in mind, you need these very low prices, not the first solars that are still high. And this is my take on solar sector. It was very interesting to research it. If you want to see where I'm investing my money, check my research platform. I'll see you in the next video.